brings the fire, ignites a candle and makes his voice. Everybody. Good afternoon, brother. It's night time here in England, but I know it's afternoon on the East Coast and in the Caribbean. And um, we want to welcome you all to our Tuesday evening Bible study, uh, Evangelism 101. I trust that you had a wonderful day. Uh, you are having a wonderful day, and I want to thank those of you who made it. Uh, possible to join us tonight. It's been a pretty busy day for me. <laughs> I had to hustle to make it here on time, but God is good. Um, we're just going to share a few announcements with you, and then we'll get our prayer going and get into the Bible study for tonight. All right. We want to tell you on Saturday, coming Sabbath, 
our eight o'clock program is going to be a little different. I will not be the speaker this this Saturday morning, this Sabbath morning at eight o'clock. Sister Naomi Hippolyte from the Women at the Well will be bringing us the 8 a.m. service. I promise you it's going to be a good one. It's going to be some beautiful music by Sister Tatiana Patrice. And um, Sister Naomi is going to bring us the word. And I think she has a couple more little surprises for us there. So let's um, come on out at 8 a.m. on Saturday morning to be blessed by the ladies. Sister Naomi Hippolyte, Sister Femet, Sister Jennifer Blass, and um, great music by Sister Tatiana Patrice. I am excited about it and looking forward to it. Okay, um, <clears throat> we want to remind you to subscribe to our Facebook uh, page, One Accord Christian Service Facebook page. It's connected. In fact, we streamed from there on a Saturday afternoon. I want to apologize to all our viewers because we got cut off. They are in the process of laying down the 9G in this area out here. And every Saturday afternoon around that time, apparently they shut the, the Wi-Fi off. You know, on Sabbath afternoons when we try to watch Brother Malcolm earlier, we usually get cut off. And I didn't think about that. And it happened to us this weekend. So I was close to the end of the sermon when it happened. So we give God thanks and praise. We got most of the message out. And uh, so we, we want to apologize to you for that. Um, hopefully we will be able to avoid that in the future. All right. But we want you to subscribe to our Facebook One Accord Christian Service page because we plan to be streaming from there uh, uh, starting hopefully next week. All right? Um, also remember our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. Everything we have done is there. All the Bible studies, all the sermons by Elder Malcolm and myself. All right? Feel free to join us. Feel free to continue to send your questions. Um, we are dealing with a question from um, Sister Anita in St. Lucia, and um, her question is this, the question we're going to be dealing with tonight is this, and it says, if someone returns tithe and offering to an independent ministry instead of the church organization or the conference, is that not sending the wrong message? Didn't Jesus commend the widow with two farthings for putting all her money into the church treasury where the leaders were corrupt. Okay? I'll be dealing with that question tonight. Malcolm and I, tonight and Thursday night, we'll be dealing this, with this question. Next week, Thursday, we have a question from Sister Cecilia Morrison uh, from Long Island, New York. And we'll be dealing with that question next week. Um, not next week, the week after next. Um, Tuesday and Thursday. Next week, we come back, or next week, Tuesday night, we come back for round two of Violet's testimony. Next week is Tuesday night, at Thursday afternoon, 4.30, um, 9.30 um, English time. We will be back uh, for the rest of the story. Sister Violet, my wife, will be sharing the rest of her testimony. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you, you don't want to miss it. She's been through quite a journey. You know, just when you think it was getting better, you'd be surprised. Sometimes it gets worse. But Violet is resilient. She trusts the Lord. She believes in God and she loves the Lord and God loves her. And so he has seen her through. So join us next week, Tuesday night, for that. Um, on Thursday night, and the Malcolm will be here uh, with uh, Gospel Reality. He will be dealing with the question I just, um, I just posed, that was posed to us by Sister Anita from St. Lucia, we're going to deal with it uh, very emphatically. What I may have missed tonight, Elder Malcolm will catch up with on Thursday night. We want to make sure that we give you what the Word of God says. Now, because of the nature of the question, we will be also using the writings of Ellen G. White to respond to this question. Usually here at... Um, one accord, we stick to the Bible and the Bible alone. But because of the nature of the question and from whence it comes, 
we are going to also be using uh, uh, the writings of Ellen G. White. Okay? Um, with that being said, I just want us to bow our heads so we can get into it. We have one hour, but we got actually 50 minutes now. So let's bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for uh, your blessings of the week. We thank you for bringing us here on this Tuesday evening uh, to study your word. I pray, Lord, that you will direct us to uh, the right places in your word to give us the proper answer to the question that was asked. We here, Lord, just want to present your word to your people uh, from the Holy Bible so they can know that what we do and say here is of you. We have no agenda. We just want to lift you up so people can make the right decision based on the word of God. So now, Lord, we pray that you will speak through me, give us the wisdom and the understanding so that we may comprehend fully and may we apply it to our lives so we may please you, glorify you, and receive the abundant blessings you have in store for us. Take full charge of the proceedings now, Lord, and as we move forward, may your spirit be the guide, may the spirit be the stay, may your spirit be the teacher, may he be the one explaining everything, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, um, uh, looking for the question again. Yes, there it is. So, the question we, go, we, 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 we have been asked is if someone returns tithe and offerings to an independent ministry instead of the church organization or the conference, that's what we have in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. That's why I'm, we're going to be using LNG White tonight because it's a, an Adventist question that has further reaching ramifications. But um, it was asked by a Seventh-day Adventist and we want to make sure we clearly define what the Bible states so, and what Ellen White's writing state. All right? So we, we, we ask him the question, if an in, a person decides to tender their tithes and offerings to an independent ministry instead of the church, organization the conference is that not sending the wrong message didn't jesus commend the widow with two farthings for putting all her money into the church treasury where the leaders were corrupt okay well now that we have asked the question we are going to go to the word of god for the answer all right turn with me in your Bibles, to the book of Numbers. To the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 18, verses 20 and 21. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Numbers chapter 18. Numbers chapter 18, and we will be looking at verses 20 and 21. And the Bible says, and the Lord spake unto Aaron, Thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them. I am thy part and thine inheritance among the children of Israel. Verse 21, And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance, for their service which they serve, even the service of of the tabernacle of the congregation. So God is speaking to the high priest, Aaron, and he said, you ain't got no inheritance, man. Your inheritance is with me. And in verse 21, he says, I have ordered the children of Israel to take care of the Levites. The Levites were the ones who did the priestly work, all right, for Israel. So they didn't go to work. Their work was to take care of the spiritual needs of the people, to take care of uh, you know, the temple and, 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 and making sure that the people received what they needed to receive from God through his messengers, the Levites, the priests. All right? So God was saying that the people are going to give a tenth to you or a tithe as an inheritance. All right? So we see that the tithe has been established and we know Abraham returned the tithe to Melchizedek. All right? And Jacob returned tithe. All right, one-tenth of what he had 
unto the Lord. Now, um, <clears throat> I want to go now to Malachi. I want to set the tone here. So let's go to Malachi. All right. So God has established the tithing system for the Levitical priesthood. All right. And so we see that being carried out in the Old Covenant. In Malachi chapter 3, for those of us who grew up in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, it's a very, very popular scripture. It's usually used to generate a certain bit of guilt in the membership when it comes to tithing. It hit you with the word of God so you could return. And um, I say that with no apology. <laughs> and uh, it says in Malachi chapter 3, Starting from verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But he said, wherein have we, wherein will we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have ye robbed me? Sorry, where wherein have we robbed thee? Verse 8. In tithes and offerings, ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. So we see here, God is not accusing the Levites, I mean just the people, of robbing him. He's, rob he's, he's accusing the Levites too. All right? He says, even this whole nation, all 12 tribes, to include the tribe of Levi. So as the people returned their tithes, some of them weren't territories, not everybody was doing it. They were robbing God. But the Levites, from the time of uh, Moses in, in Numbers to this time, the time of Malachi, when this was, 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 was shared with the people, even the Levi has got, Levites had gotten corrupt. And we know what happened with the sons of Eli how they did what they wanted with the tithe and the offerings, you know, and they lost their lives as a result. Even Eli lost his life because he refused to curtail uh, the wicked activity, the thieving activity of his sons who were both priests after uh, the, 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 the order of a Levi. So we see now that the whole nation had robbed God. All right? Verse 10. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of the ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. So God is saying, come back to me, man. Do what I ask you to do. All right? Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Now, the storehouse is the treasury room in the sanctuary. You know, in those days, there were no banks. All right? So the temple was the place where the wealth was kept, where everything was stored. So God was asking them to bring it into the storehouse. All right? so that there may be meat in his house, not just for the Levites, but for the poor and the needy and those who, 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 are, who are lacking, all right? The orphans, the widows, those who were unable to fend for themselves. It is the responsibility of the church to take care of the poor among them, all right? So we see the tithe being established. Now I want to ask the question, does God need our tithe? He's upset here with Israel. Because they didn't return tithe unto him. Does God need our tithe? Let's see what the Bible says. Psalm chapter 50. Psalm chapter 50. <clears throat> verse 10. We're going to look at verse 10 to 12. Psalm 5, chapter 50 verse 10 to 12. For every beast of the forest is mine. And the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountain and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. For the world is mine and the fullness thereof. 
So, based on the psalmist David articulating to us what he knows about God, we realize that God don't need nothing from man. Everything around us belongs to him. Should we belong to him? So, you know, all the money in the banks belong to God. You know what I'm saying? So God don't need anything from us. You see? So the question is asked, why then has he asked us to tithe? Okay? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 23. Deuteronomy chapter 14. And the Bible says, verse 23, And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose to place his name there. The tithe of thy corn, of thy wine, of thine oil, and the firstling of thy herd and of thy flocks, thou mayest learn, sorry, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God. Now that's what I really want to get there. The last part. Why should we tithe? So we could learn to put God first. So God should be placed first in everything. Jesus says, if you are going to follow me, you must deny yourself. Put me first. All right? Follow me. See, Jesus put us first. He left heaven, took on our vesture, became one of us. In fact, he was the least among us. But he came to save us. And so we see that Jesus put us first. And if we are to break uh, the bondage of sin that Satan has held us in, we too must put someone else first. Self has to die. Not self. Not I. But Christ. So God has to be put first. That's the purpose. He's teaching us how to give. Okay? That's the purpose. God don't need our money. But the money and the stuff that we tithe is used to be a blessing to those less fortunate about us. Okay? It was a blessing for the, uh, the Levites who worked diligently to minister, to serve God's people faithfully and well. And I, I, I need to emphasize that. Faithfully and well. Okay? Um, they didn't have other jobs. They didn't go off to the school of the prophets, get other degrees so they could moonlight elsewhere while collecting the tithe in paychecks. I want us to get that abundantly clear. I just want to, uh, uh, I just want to, to, to show how far we have wandered from the precepts God has put in the Bible. You know, and I always say that here. We stick to the Bible and we're going to call it as we see it, as God presents it to us. You understand me? Uh, the Levitical priesthood, the priests weren't wealthy. You understand me? They were simply those who God had called out of the tribes of Israel, the 12 tribes. He called one tribe out to be the ministers, the servants, the spiritual servants of the rest of the 11 tribes. You see? And they, God was going to take care of them. You see? And he did it through the, the tenth. You see? And that's all they did. That's all they did. They ministered to the people. Okay? Now, not too many churches I know have ministers like that. Well, I will say, I spent a few years in the Baptist church when I first came back. And I must say, the pastors I know in the Baptist church worked a full-time job and then they ministered. I can remember Pastor Tommy Ford. I can remember Pastor James McGrady. I worked with Pastor James McGrady um, for a while. Pastor McGrady had a car dealership. I worked with him at the car dealership. And then on evenings, we would meet, visit members of the Free Will Baptist Church that he pastored, the Church of Jesus Pete's in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And he would visit at, on evenings and at nights after he shut the shop down. And then he'd go home and he would do it again on weekends. And, uh, but he would work every day. 
so that not a penny from the church coffers went into his pocket. And I know that for a fact because I was right there with him. I used to be his right hand man. You know? Um, so uh, the, 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 the less fortunate were able to benefit fully. Even as Pastor McGrady visited the sick, I remember going all the way to, um, to, 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 to Cary, to the cancer hospital at, 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 at um, the University of North Carolina to visit a sister who was stricken with cancer and praying for her and stuff. You know, we, we ministered to people. You know what I'm saying? But he worked a full-time job. Um, in some denominations, all the pastors have to do is to tend to the flock. You know? We don't see that happening over, but it's important that you return your time and they get their paycheck. Okay, we leave that there. So we, 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 we you know, I just needed to, to, to get that out there. When should we tithe? When should we tithe? Let's see what the book says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Proverbs 3. All right. Psalms, Proverbs. And let's look at chapter 3 and verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of thy increase. All right. So, in tithing, we must take out the tithe first. When? As soon as we get the paycheck, we take out God's. All right? Forget your bills. Forget everything else. Take God's out first. Then, and we should tithe from our gross, not our net. Okay? I also want to say here, tithing is not only about money. It's also about time. It's also about talents. You see, at some point we're going to do a whole stewardship seminar here so we can break it all down for you. Right? Tithing shouldn't be about uh, money alone. It should be also about your time and the talents God has blessed you with. Return it to Him. You know, you return it to God at least one-tenth of your time. You know, and if, you, if you're a singer, every tenth song should be to God's glory. If you give more, to God be the glory. Then you double and triple tithing. But the more, as God has blessed us, we use these things to honor his name and to glorify others so that they can come to know him. It's important that we understand tithing is not only about money. It has become all about money because uh, the focus is on money. Mama. And that's unfortunate. All right? Now, let's go to the story of the widow that um, our sister this, this asked about when she asked a question. She says, you know, didn't Jesus commend the widow who gave her mites, her farthing, into the church treasury, although the leaders were corrupt? Turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Matthew, Mark. All right? And we're going to read verse 42. All right? In fact, let's start from verse 41. It says, Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto them, verse 43, he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than they which cast into the treasury. All right? Now, what uh, uh, their sister is saying is, all right, didn't com Jesus commend the widow? Jesus commended the widow for giving her all. Not for where she gave it. All right? Jesus says, let's read it, all right? That poor widow has cast in more than all which have cast into the treasury. All right? 
Now, there's no problem with casting into the treasury. He's just making the point. He's singling her out because she gave all that she had. She gave 100%. She didn't give 10%. She didn't give 50%. She gave 100%. Some of these rich people were giving 10%. You know, some were maybe giving more, some were giving less. But she gave all. And that's what Jesus commended her for. Jesus did not commend her for where she put it. Okay? Let's look at that same story in Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. Alright, the next book over. And we're going to read um, verse 1 to 4. We see the similar story. Luke's account is similar. It says, and he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. And he saw a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites. And he said, Of a truth I say unto you, this poor widow hath cast in more than they all. For all these have of their abundance cast it into the offering of the Lord. But she of her penury has cast in all the living that she had. So we see Luke making it even clearer. You alright? That Christ is saying, look at this lady, man. This fellow's giving from the abundance. You see, but she's giving all. Now, let me see if I can help you understand what Jesus was, the lesson Jesus was sharing with his disciples. If I have a fairy godmother in St. Lucia somewhere, Oh, in America, that leaves me $10 million when she dies. The church says to me, you're supposed to return a tithe. Okay? I give 10%. I'm giving up my abundance, a million dollars. I've got $9 million. What am I going to do with it? Oh, I'm going to buy a house, I'm going to buy a couple of cars, I'm going to give to my kids. And truth be told, if I am not spiritual, and I'm not led by the Spirit, that $9 million could lead me straight to hell. That's why the Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge Him, and let Him direct thy path. So in our giving, we should let the Spirit dictate. And that's where we make the transition from the Levitical priesthood to the new covenant that Christ established. You see? The new covenant that Christ established. <clears throat> In Luke chapter 10, Christ says something that I want us to take very pay close attention to. When I was coming around and I was learning, my mentor, Dr. Ruth Vin Roy, said to me, when you study the Bible, study it slowly and take in every word. Because every word put in there is put in there for a purpose so you can glean the meaning of what God is trying to communicate to you and I. So we've got to take every word. Okay? So Luke chapter 10. Let's start reading from verse 4. Now he's talking to his disciples. He's sending them out. 70 disciples. He's sending them out to do missionary work. Alright? So let's read from verse 4. Carry neither purse, no money, nor script, nor something that you plan to say. Alright? Don't, 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 don't prepare a sermon and don't walk with no money. Alright? No shoes, and salute no man by the way. And into whatever house you enter first say, Peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall turn to you again. Verse 7. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give you. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from the house, go not from house to house. So wherever you go, whichever house takes you in, eat and drink. Okay? Because you are worthy of the work you're doing for God. God, in other words, will ensure that the people you're working with will supply your needs. You will eat, you will drink. You alright? You will not have any lack. If you need finances to move on, 
God will provide it through somebody there. He will touch somebody's heart. Okay? Now, Jesus was not a part of the church he was born into. I want you to understand that. He'd go by the synagogues and he'd preach and they'd kick him out and they'd try to throw him off a cliff. In, 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 in John chapter 8 and 9, at the end of 8, he had preached a sermon, they dragged him out and they were going to stone him. And the Spirit of God had him pass through them so they couldn't find him to stone him. So they weren't supporting his ministry. We know that. Jesus had an independent ministry. Independent of the Jewish church led by the scribes and the Pharisees and the Levites. Okay? They did not support his ministry. How do I know that? Go to Luke chapter 8. Go to Luke chapter 8. <clears throat> All right? Verse 1. And it came to pass, verse 1, reading from verse 1 to 3. And it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. So Jesus and his twelve disciples are going from city to city. They have to eat. They have to get their clothes washed. They have to find somewhere to sleep. All right? Because they were going from city to city. All right? It was going to take money. Now in Luke it tells us that Judas was the treasurer for Jesus' ministry. Judas was not the treasurer for the church. I think everybody listening to me will agree with me on that. He was the treasurer for the church. Now, where did the money come from? And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, that's the one that was the woman of the night, out of whom he cast out seven devils. And Joanna, the wife of Chutza, Herod's steward, and Susanna and many others who ministered or served unto him from their substance. So Mary Magdalene, who apparently had made some money in a prostituting, we know that because she bought a very expensive perfume to anoint his feet, began to use that money to sustain the ministry of Jesus. And Joanna, Chuksa's wife, I mean, Chuksa's wife, who was Herod's steward, he had a good job. His wife was using some of his money to support Jesus' ministry. And the others, all right? Susanna and many others, they made sure the clothes were washed. They made sure they had food and there was money for travel and everything else. Okay? So Jesus established an independent ministry, independent of the church his father had established from the days of Moses. Brothers and sisters, if you have any questions, write them down. I'm just going by the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Okay? If it's in the Bible, we accept it. If it's not in the Bible, we reject it. Straight up. You know what I'm saying? So, we see Jesus having established an independent ministry, being um, supplied with the finances and the stuff he needs so his ministry can thrive. Okay? We know the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. It was a little boy with some fish and some loaves. And once the request was made of him, he gave. And that one little boy's lunch fed 5,000 men. One of the problems we have in church today, while we can't finish our church buildings, while, while we pay in all this exorbitant interest to banks over mortgages, God, I'm pleased with that, let me tell y'all. Because we've been doing it man's way. You see? It's because we have been misappropriating. Within the so-called house of God, his tithe and his offerings, we are robbing him. We are robbing him. That is why 
He sent his son to set up an independent ministry. Now, Satan followed him through Judas. And Judas was robbing them. The Bible tells us that. Judas was a thief. He was stealing the money. That's why he had a problem with Mary when she busted the alabaster. He said, oh, the poor we have among us, we are going to gone to the poor. And the Bible tells you that this he said because he held the purse and he was stealing the money. So even in this independent ministry, people were stealing the money. Okay? It doesn't matter where you go, Satan will follow. So you have to be vigilant. You know, when, I, when we meet, and the Malcolm, myself, and the, the rest of us, I tell people that we have a responsibility to be good stewards of what God has blessed us with here at one accord Christian service movement. God is looking to see how faithful we are with our time. He's faithful to see how he's, 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 um, he's looking to see how faithful we are with our ministering to others. You know, can you guys reach us if you call us? Are we there to minister to you when you need us to? You know what I'm saying? Are we there? Can you get us on the phone? If the sheep needs help, should the hireling be available? When the wolf comes to attack the flock, should the sheep dog be there to protect the sheep? Huh? You see? It, it, tithing is far reaching, brothers and sisters. You want to collect a paycheck, then you need to be there when the flock needs you. I'm going to say it loud, I'm going to say it plain. Most pastors, when you call them, you can't get them. And when you, you can't even leave a message to some of them because their the mailboxes are full. Now, if your only job, you're making a paycheck of $5,000, $6,000 a month, and your only responsibility is your membership, why can't they reach you? Tell me that's not robbing God. You see? So God has to send up set up independent ministries because his work in the Christian church started with independent churches. That's a whole different story. But when you go to Acts, the 120 was the first independent church that came out of Christ's independent ministry. The 120 did not have scribes and Pharisees among them. Okay? They started from the independent ministry that Jesus himself, the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the ruler of all, he came and became a man. And so his work could go forward. He had to step outside the church his father had established with Moses and start an independent ministry that his father touched the hearts of people to support. So that they could flourish. And then he started the first independent church. When Peter preached a sermon. And 3,000 were baptized in one day. And when you read the book of Acts after that. They had to organize real quick. To make sure everybody's needs were met. That's how Stephen and the other six deacons came into being. That's why Ananias and Sapphira lost their lives. Because what happened was. People began to give freely. Not a tenth. Not a tenth. All right? Go back to the word of God. Let's see what the New Testament says. Because the transition was made by Jesus from the Levitical priesthood and the tenth to freely giving. All right? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians Chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. <clears throat> Some people aren't going to be happy with this Bible study, but I didn't ask the question. You understand me? But God has told me I need to answer it. And I'm going to answer it from the word of God. And if anybody have a problem, write us, call us, and let's clarify it. This is the word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Let's look at verse 7. And we're going to read from 7 to 11. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, let him give. 
Every man has a what? Purpose in his heart. Now, that's tricky. I'm telling you why it's tricky. We'll come back to that. So it's not what was told you before. It's not a tenth. It's as you purpose in your heart. You want to give 15%? Fine. You want to give 50%? Fine. Shoot, you want to be like the widow and give 100%? Fine. As you purpose in your heart, you want to give 5%? Fine. Every man according to as he purposes in his heart, so let him give. Nobody can tell you what to give or how to give except the Spirit of God. The God's word has to be hid in your heart. The Spirit of God must be ministered to your spirit. You must be walking after the Spirit. Romans 8 verse 1. You must be walking after the Spirit. You must be listening to the Spirit. Romans 8 26. Right? For God's Spirit ministers to your spirit. Sorry, Romans 8 16. All right, Romans 8, 16. Let me make my correction quickly. All right? So, when it talks about purposing in your heart, it means the Spirit tells you, give so much. And that's what you do. That's what you do. All right? Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Give cheerfully, not grudgingly. There is no blessing to give him grudgingly. If you're not feeling good giving it, you know, you're not happy giving it, keep it. Because God can't bless you. Okay? That's what the word says. Alright? Or of necessity. Well, my mother tell me I have to give my tithe, so I go give my tithe. <laughs> Boy, I tell you this tithe thing. That's of necessity. No, oh, no, 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 no. Don't give it. Keep it. You understand me? Give it cheerfully. God, be happy to give it. Giving to God should be happy time. It should be joyful time. What are you going to do, man? You're going to give to God, man. <laughs> I love this time. Man. I love this part. That's how it's with it. God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. When you give it cheerfully, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you... Always have all sufficiency. You will have no need. There will be no deficiency. Oh my goodness, brothers. I just wish we as Christians could exercise the faith in God we claim to have. Especially when giving. Let me tell you something. Jesus says, you can't serve God and money. Alright? Mammon. You see? But let me tell you something. Money can put a lot of us in hell. Many of us. Because that thing called money boy. It's an aphrodisiac. And God understands that. So he's trying to learn, teach us how to give freely. And cheerfully. So that he can bless us abundantly. So that we shall be always sufficient. Without any deficiency. Alright? In all things. Not just in finances. But in health. In all goodness. Our children are going to be prospering. Our homes are going to be fine. Our car tires are going to wear out as quickly. Our cars are going to break down. Man, you don't understand how God does bless. You see? In all things, may abound to every good work. we got to give a type of our cars and our homes. You know? When somebody needs a place to stay, let them come in. Let them come stay by you. To you tie your house, your car, you go to church or whatever, and you see some members there who walk and give them a ride home. Give a couple more ride home. Do you ain't carrying them on your back? You know what I'm saying? We think it's all money. But no, God has blessed us so we can bless others. Giving freely. When the Spirit impresses upon your heart. I grew up in St. Lucia, and we had a pastor. Bought him a nice little car. I ain't going to say what kind of car because some of y'all from St. Lucia are watching. I ain't want y'all to say, oh, I'm talking about so and so. And he would drive to church on Sabbath mornings and see members walking from La Clary, walking down the chaussee. And say, hi, Pastor, and he waved. And somebody said, Pastor, one day, why are you looking at the right? He said, no, man, let the saints walk. So he tells me he wasn't a saint because he was driving by his own admission. You see? Refused to give anybody a ride in his new car because he didn't want to get the mats dirty or whatever, whatever. Whatever it was. 
it was a little God to him. You see? Verse 9 says, As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministereth seed to the sow above ministers bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruit of your righteousness. So when you sow a seed in the garden of God, when you sow a seed that is going to be a blessing to the work of God, God is saying he will increase the fruits of your righteousness. He's going to bless you in every which way. He's going to bless you health-wise. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the Bible says. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness. That's verse 11. When you become a cheerful giver, you become enriched in everything to all bountifulness which causeth through us thanksgiving to God. When you see how God begin to bless you, all you could do is just bless, thank God. Thanksgiving, thanksgiving. Just giving God thanks and praise. You see? Brothers and sisters, God requires us to give to those who he has placed in our sphere to bless us. Now, only you know if you're getting blessed or not. Are you getting blessed there? Are you getting blessed there? Or are you getting blessed there? As you get blessed, let the Spirit tell you who to give to. I have said to us, to our group, and I will say it publicly, we will never ask for a penny. You will never have Brother Malcolm or myself solicit funds. You will never see a sign under us when we're preaching saying where to give. This is our PayPal account. That will never happen. God started this ministry, he will take care of it. If God touches your heart, and he has touched the hearts of some of you already, he has done that. Somebody says to me, how do you take care of yourself? How do you take care of yourself? You know what I'm saying? A sister. And she wrote us a check. Somebody called me from Jersey. He and his wife. Says, how you guys make out? They said they're going to write a check. God has begun to bless. You know what I'm saying? And everything we do here is transparent. It's transparent. You see? Now, the question is asked, if you give your offering to an independent ministry of the church organization, is that not sending the wrong message? No, it is not. Because when Mary Magdalene and Susanna and Chuksa's wife, all right, began giving to Jesus' ministry, they were not sending a mixed message. They were giving to a ministry that was blessing them. Mary Magdalene was going to be stoned one morning. Jesus saved her from the stoning. Not only did he save her from the stoning, which was physical, he, stole, he saved her from the degradation of prostitution. And her life changed. And so she gave to the ministry that delivered her, that God used to deliver her. She wasn't sending a mixed message. She was sending a clear message. This is where God is working. How do I know? He changed me. That's where I have to give. So somebody else like me can be delivered through that same ministry. That's the message. That's what the Bible teaches. Okay? Now, um, let me see how much time we have. Oh boy, we got everything. Let me go to 2 Kings. Let's see what the Bible says about that in the Old Testament. Turn with me to 2 Kings. All right? 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 42. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 42. All right? 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 42. I got to hustle it up. And there came a man from Baal, Baal, Baal Shalisha, Baal Shalisha, and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and full as of corn in the house there, and says, 
Give unto the people that they may eat. Okay, so let's see what happens here. This is what the concordance says. This is what the explanation says. All right, verse 42. Instead of bringing the first fruits of the new harvest, as stated in Leviticus chapter 2, verse 14, and Leviticus chapter 23, verse 15 and 17, and Deuteronomy 18, 3 to 5, all right? To the apostate preach at Bethel and Dan, instead of bringing his tithe and offerings to the apostate priest at Bethel and at Dan, this godly man in the northern kingdom may have contributed his tithe and offerings for the sustenance of Elisha. It was given to Elisha and those associated with him. Thus they looked upon Elisha rather than the apostate priest as the true representative of their covenant Lord. These people said these priests are doing right. I know that's where it's supposed to go, but look at the prophet of Eli Elisha. Elisha is doing what God says. He raised the Shulamite woman. He healed uh, Naaman. He is the one making a difference in our lives. These priests are powerless. They are doing nothing for us but preaching a sermon on Sabbath. So we are going to give to them so that they can continue to work for God on our, for us, uh, uh, for, for, for God, uh, for us on God's behalf. For us on God's behalf. Okay? This is what the Bible teaches. Second Kings. Chapter 4. Verse 42. Write it down. Check it out. Ask your pastors. Go to the concordance. Read two or three or four different concordance. Find out what it says. And see if I am selling you a pipe dream. Alright? Now. I want to go to Matthew. Chapter 6. Alright? We're talking about type and offering. Talking about type and offering. What should we give? I think we've answered the question from the Bible. Alright? We talked about the woman and why Jesus commended her. He didn't commend her for giving to the church. He commended her for, he commended her for giving her all. Alright? And we answered the part of the question why if giving to an independent ministry is sending a mixed message. We use the ministry of Jesus Christ, which was independent, to prove that that's not the case. All right? Now, in Matthew chapter 6, all right? Matthew chapter 6, it says, all right? Um, I want to see if I get it. Yes, from 1 to 4. Take heed. That ye do not your alms. I have to look up the word alms. It means when you give your tithe and offerings. Alms. Your gifts. Before men. Take heed that you do not give your alms before men. To be seen of them. Otherwise you have no reward. That's what the Bible says. My goodness, brothers and sisters. I got something to say about this and we're going to close up. Alright? We got three minutes. Alright? Or else you have no reward of your father which is in heaven. You might get a reward from the church. You might get a reward. Uh, my wife said, oh yes, she said I have to go to Ellen White. Thank you. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Thank you. I got to say, give you, give you the Ellen White on that one. So I'm going to do this real quick and then I'm going to do the Ellen White. All right? Verse 2. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may, be, they may have glory of men. Verily, I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest thy arm, now this is Jesus speaking, he's telling us how to do our arms. This is the servant on the mount. He's teaching us how to live the gospel of Jesus Christ when it comes to giving. When thou doest arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. So my right hand not supposed to know what my left hand doing. My hand supposed to say nothing to nobody. It's not supposed to even leave me. All right? That thy arms may be in secret. We want to keep sins in secret. You understand me? We want to really keep iniquity in secret. So the church can be messed up. But we want to do our arms publicly. So people go say I rich. And this person thing. Alright? But God is saying no. Expose the sin and keep the arms doing, giving secret. 
All right? That thy father, which seeth in secret himself, shall reward thee openly. So why do we put our names on tithe envelopes? That's a doctrine of man imposed upon us. They are fleecing the sheep. And the unfortunate thing is, in my religious organization, you have pastors and treasurers who will sit down and say, Brother Silburn Calendar has not been returning tithe because we don't see an envelope with his name on it all year, so he cannot hold a position in church. It is not your business. It is not your position to dictate and decide who gets offices in church because they pay or don't pay tithe. It's up to God. Now, me, Silburn, I have not put my name on a tithe envelope in years. And will never, because you're not going to block my blessing with your foolishness. You see? I'm going to do it the way God said. And he's blessed me. I ain't rich. I ain't increasing goods. But I ain't hungry. You understand me? And I work sleeping by the bus stop. No more. I used to sleep there one time. You see? God will bless you. He will reward you openly. We're not getting rewarded openly because we're giving openly. You can't give openly and expect to receive openly. Or give in, in, in openly and expect to, yes. You know, you've got to give in secret. That's what the Bible says. The doctrine of man that says you've got to put your name on a tight envelope is an abomination. And it's blocking your blessing. You're not doing it God's way. I'm telling you guys, knowledge is power. Before you knew, God winked. Now you know. You can't go back to not knowing. You are going to be held accountable by God. Now you're all going to say, we're going to stop, we're going to stop watching Silburn and Malcolm. Because they're giving us too much information from the word of God. But you need to go back and read Matthew chapter 6, 1 to 4 prayerfully. In your prayer closet, asking the Spirit to guide you into all truth. Now, the, ex, the mistake or the, 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 the reason they give you in the church is so they can give you a, a, a receipt for your tax return. So you can return, you can get your taxes back. Abomination. Abomination. Jesus says, render to Caesar, the government, taxes. The things that are Caesar's. Caesar is supposed to get taxes. And to God, the things that are God, God gets the tithe and the offering. Don't bring them together. Don't give to God and expect it back from Caesar. You're trying to mama guy God. You're not freely giving. You're giving to get back. God can bless you. And we've been doing it so long, it has begun to, it has begun to seem right in our eyes. I, got, I have Adventist friends who argue with me that there's nothing wrong with that. We've been doing it so long. Our parents did it. Our grandparents did it. So now it's become right in our eyes. God is no respecter of our parents and grandparents. They may not have known better. But knowledge has increased. When the white man come with his mama guy scriptures and gave us all this stuff, we didn't know better. But we now our eyes have been opened. We have begun to study for ourselves and we recognize that some of the stuff they taught us wasn't true. We need to get back to the old path that Jesus set. That's why I say to everybody, if you want to know the gospel of Jesus Christ, how Jesus requires of us to live, we need to go back to his word. Matthew 5, 6 and 7 is articulated there. Now, let's see what Ellen White said. You see, my wife on my case, that she wants me to tell you what Ellen White said. She gave me about 10 notes already. I wrote it down. This is from ministrymagazine.org, 1994 February. Okay? Now, this writing is, I got it from the Adventist archives. All right? The ministry magazine. And this quotation was put in there in the February 1994 edition. I'm giving you. Ministrymagazine.org, 1994, February. Write it down. Go check it out. Ellen White's comment to her son, 
W.C. White, Helping Needy Workers. The subtopic is Helping Needy Workers. I want to repeat where I got it from. Ministrymagazine.org, an Adventist publication. The 1994 February issue. Ellen White's comment to her son W.C. White under the subtopic Helping Needy Workers. The Lord has shown me the experience which your father James White and I have passed through in poverty and deprivation in the early days of our work has given to me a keen appreciation and sympathy for others who are passing through similar experiences of want and suffering. And where I see workers in this cause that have been true and loyal, that have been true and loyal, that have been true and loyal, all right, to this work, who are left to suffer. It is my duty, Ellen White speaking, to speak on their behalf. If this, my speaking, does not move the brethren to help them, then I must help them. Even if I am obliged to use a portion of my tithe to do so. Then I must help them even if I am obliged to use a portion of my tithe to do so. The message of God to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm quoting her. Ministrymagazine.org 1994 February edition under Helping Needy Workers. She continues, although the specific date Oh, well, she's got it. it says, it the, the, the article called it, although the specific date of this statement is not known, W.C. White, her son, explained that these experiences, experiences relate mostly to the years we, he and his mother, were in Europe from 1885 to 1887 and Australia 19, um, 1891 to 1900 and in those years when they worked in the southern states, the black states, where the black people, where they began to work with the black people. You understand me? Them white people wasn't giving no money to proselyte like no black people. We know that. All right? And, you know, if we analyze the reality of the Adventist work in Europe and Australia and the southern states at that time, we see that each of these places was at that time a missionary field without adequate provision. Members in established fields were not sufficiently concerned about helping those missions. So Ellen White realized the racism was there, all right, when it came to the southern states. She realized that it was hard to get people to support the work in Europe at the time and in Australia. So she decided whatever she had to do, she would do. She took her tithe and gave to those independent works. Now the church flourishes because there's a big church in Europe. There's a big church in Australia. And the Christian, the Adventist church in America is mostly a black church now. The southern states has flourished. You see? And they're taking our money and they're still not supporting us the way they should. But that's all right. That's a whole different story. So my dear brothers and sisters, we see, all right, that God does not care about any established religion, what God cares about is that his work is done. And he expects us to support those who are doing his work diligently and well. That's what he expects. He will bless you if you give freely. My last scripture for you tonight is Luke 6. Luke 6, 38. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Luke 6, 38. We're going to end with Luke 6, 38. And the Bible says, <clears throat> Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall a man give unto your bosom. For with the same measure, hear this out, that you meet with all, it shall be measured unto you. You give a tenth, you get the tenth for your blessing. You give 50%, you get 50% of your blessing. You give all, God will give you 200 or 300%. 
I want to end with two short testimonies. Before I came back to the Adventist Church, I used to attend the Free Will Baptist Church in North Carolina. Pastor Tommy Ford preached a sermon one Sunday, and he says, anytime somebody comes to you with a need, God has sent them, you supply that need. A friend of mine named Jerry had an old beat up Jetta Volkswagen. It broke down at the corner of Palmerley Drive and Murkerson Road. As we were driving to work that morning, I saw him broken down. He walked to where I worked and he came to me and said, I went to AutoZone, which is right there. He said, I need a $5 part for my car, but I have no money. Can you let me hold $5, Silver? I said, Jerry, I got $5. That's all I have for me to buy lunch today. I can't give it to you. As Jerry walked away, I remember the words Pastor Tommy Ford preached at Parks Chapel on Murkerson Road that day, that the day before. I ran back and I called Jerry. I said, Jerry, come, come here. Take my five dollars. Okay? Get your car part and go on about your business. Jerry learned to he's got his car part. I decided I'm just going to stay hungry that day and I might go home that evening and only eat a big meal. Do you know, at 12 o'clock at lunchtime, a friend of mine from Antigua, who was still in the army, his name is Shelly Diet. He lives in Atlanta, Georgia. Drove up on the lot in his blue van. And he says, Silver, the spirit asked me to take you to lunch today. Shelly wasn't a practicing Christian. He took me to lunch at a Chinese restaurant and bought a $15 meal for me. Three times what I gave Jerry. God is faithful. God is faithful. I have a friend. I'll just say her name is Akia. We went to church at Agape in Brooklyn. Pastor uh, R.C. Connor's church. Pastor R.C. Connor preached a sermon. He said, if what you have can um, supply your need, plant a seed. Akia was working at Vim on Flatbush and she returned her whole paycheck. She signed the back. She had a check in church. She signed the back and she put it in there. She says to me, I gave my whole check. And me, I've been an old advent. He said, what you do that for? You're supposed to give 10%. And she said, what the pastor said, and I just wanted to plant a seed. Akia life took off from there. She went to college. She graduated without owing anybody. She went to Baruch College in Manhattan. Then she went to another university, got a master's degree. And God has blessed her abundantly. Now she lives in D.C. in a high-rise apartment. Have a big job at a law firm. God has blessed her. The good thing about that young lady is she has continued to serve God. Why am I sharing these things with you? And I'm sorry to go a little over time tonight. Because God is faithful to those that are faithful to him. We are saying to you today, I want to thank Sister um, Anita for this question. As God touches your heart, give freely wherever his spirit tells you. He will decide to tell you where to give because he knows where your money will be used 100% to bring glory to his name and to be a blessing to those who are sick and suffering in the world of sin. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God's face continue to shine upon you. May he always give you peace. It's my prayer for you in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you for making your word plain. If anybody has any doubts, Lord, may they, may they call us so we can clarify it with scripture. Bless all our viewers tonight. Keep them under your almighty care. Protect them from harm and from danger. And Lord, may your will be done in their lives Every day, we pray. Bless us, have us, have us have a pleasant evening and a pleasant night's rest. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. May God bless you. Oh
Jesus.